Hello, today's episode of Beer Canis Garage, we are with Aid and we're going to do a review of uh, Project D. We're going to have a look at the progress so far. Uh, as you may notice, the engine bay is open so we can have a look at why it now goes as fast as it looks. Okay then, Aid, so um, what's actually uh, different? It's well, last time we had a look. We got a big engine cover and hydro dipped it with an ST engine, so it just looks like it's quick. Brilliant. <laughs> It's almost as good as go crafter stripes. Yes, yeah, back in the day. Yeah, which, which was insane, tape if you did it right. Yeah. Um, well, it's ST engine in it now. Block modded, which some people say is really important on them, other people say it doesn't matter. More depends on the, how healthy the engine is and whether you let it warm up and cool it down better. Um, it should be at around about 330 brake horsepower. I've got a couple of little gremlins to sort out, but it'll be there. Engine size is two and a half litre, the five cylinder Volvo engine. Um, we've got Dream Science Mod X RS map on it, RS uh, Focus RS injectors in it, Focus RS spark plugs in it, three inch downpipe, three inch sports cap, and a three inch Miltec Ultimate center section on it. Uh, custom made rear exhaust because I want to keep it single exit because I'm not trying, well, not trying to build an ST copy. Yeah. AirTech plenum, as you can see. Yeah, um, you. We've got pro hoses on absolutely everything. All the coolant hoses, the pro hoses, and the boost hoses are also made by pro hose. We've got the Whiz Beach Engineering V3 crossover. I run the V2 on my other ST, and that's that's faultless. But with this, I want to go a little bit more. So we've got the V3 crossover, which relocates the MAF sensor. Um, pro Ram air filter, Ram air. ECU relocator off the top of my head that's about it but there's probably more that's, uh, that looks impressive it does look a good bike yeah, yeah. so have your students had a hand in um, in all of this yeah they've absolutely everything has been done with students help when we took the donor car apart uh, we made sure that every wiring plug was labeled as you've seen in the other videos that you've done when you come and see it and yeah. that just to make sure that it goes back together easier. I mean, it, you could do it if you didn't label it, you could work it all out. It's pretty straightforward, but it would take more time. And we were trying to teach the students the right way to do things and the easy way to do things. Yeah, so definitely. every plug got labeled, which did make it easier. There's no two ways about it. It made it easier when we were rebuilding it back up. You could lay the loom out and see where everything went. Um, well, enough, that's what me and Jill didn't do when we took the loom <laughs> off of the MX-5. Hindsight and you live and learn. Absolutely. I bet you'll do it next time. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. Well. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> we um, had originally, my um, plan was to have it done by Easter. But the kids and that, they stripped the donor car apart so quickly, but correctly as well. And then we were waiting for Mintex brakes to come down because they come down, give us a visit, donated a lot of stuff to the academy, which is really nice of them. Excellent. Thank you, Mintex. Mintex. Um, and so we didn't start stripping this one down until the end of October. Like I say again, the students work so well on it because they really engage with it. They love it. They really do. And this was stripped apart in less than a month. Brilliant. And we actually had the engine in the engine bay and running before Christmas. Fantastic. In less than two months. Well, certainly quicker than us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm actually very proud of your team. Yeah. Uh, and I, as well. Yes. You all done well, really well, proud of the students, yeah. yeah. Hoping, well, I was hoping to get as many shows as I can this year, but let's see how the petrol crisis goes. Yeah. See? Yeah. If I'm lucky, I'm getting 17 miles to the gallon. Cool. So, and that's only used on V power because yeah. it's the better fuel. But still want to get it to as many shows as I can to try and spread the name and the awareness of it and to let as many people know that this has been built by students who don't get on school with autism, ADHD, behavioural issues, you know. Yeah. This is what they're capable of. A lot of people don't realise it. But in the right environment, with the right bit of encouragement, these students don't do anything. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, so that's the engine bay. Um, what else is different from the outside? Outside, we've got a version two front splitter. Along there, um, so the last one just about saw the end of uh, show season last year, but it come off in more than one bit, we'll say. But <laughs> I always wanted to build a slightly bigger one. Didn't um, anything, I take it. No, <laughs> it's, 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 it <laughs> no, 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 there's no nothing serious that hit it. It was just uh, just like speed bumps, curbs, you yeah. know, getting in and out of some shows. You know, you've got bumps to get over and that. 
So, yeah, course, that's quite low, isn't it? It is fairly low. We have, obviously, the engine and gearbox, it's a six speed gearbox now as well. The actual physical weight of that was more than the diesel engine. Yeah, so, we've wound the coil overs up just a touch just to compensate for that. Um, side skirts were on it at the end of last year, but weren't on it in the first video that we've done with you. Um, they've got Jones and Weimark Steelworks on it. That's because Matt Jones of Jones and Weimark donated us so much stuff to help out. Um, the front half of the roll cage, he gave us all the metal for that. So, you know, I can't thank him enough. He really helped us out there. Also gave us the metal for the seat bases. Yeah. Yeah, at the back uh, we got some bumper lights from Custom Rides. The that looks really cool. Yeah, they're, they're great actually, especially at night. They're four function LED lights. Uh, I think they're supposed to be like side lights, fog lights, indicators and reverse lights. But because I've got the central fog light now, that also flashes as a rain light. Not pro legal, but I don't use it for that. Yeah. Um, I've wired up the fog light part of the bumper lights for brake lights. So, at night they look really cool. Also, we've now got DTM tips on the exhaust before they work. Uh, uh, it's a three inch, like I say, full three inch system on it now. Yeah. I made the back end of it, the tailpipe, myself, with welding, just pie cutting and welding the two. Yeah. Have to have a massive shout out to Ed Parr. He's a good lad. And he knew I wanted a wider rear wing for the spoiler. Yeah. So the bugger went and bought it for us. Oh, really? Excellent. Yeah. So it's it's the widest wing they do now, the actual blade bit. Yeah. It's only about two inches wider either side, maybe. But when you look at it before, especially I noticed it, and you look at it now, it definitely looks that little bit more wider and that. So big thanks well, I wasn't to sure, it. sure, so I didn't want to say. But, yeah. um, I have to look at some uh, before and after pictures. Yeah. But it looks brilliant. But a big thanks to Ed for that. Another um, person I need to shout out is James. Monster Ford Storm on Instagram. Um, we were building the front half of the roll cage, and unfortunately, our pipe bender broke. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, we'd done one side perfectly, and then the pipe bender broke. James heard about that, and he bought us a pipe bender. Brilliant. Out of it, you know, um, I'm just overwhelmed by some of the help that people yeah. offer and give, you know. Just, we are. It's, it wouldn't be here without the input of some of the people. Yeah. It's not too much different from before. Same seats, same harnesses. Um, like I said, same centre console because it's got a big cubby hole here where you can literally fit everything in. Yeah. And it's better for all me change for me burger van as well. Brilliant. We've got the start switches here now. So... This looks awesome. You still have to turn the key. One, it takes the steering lock off. Two, it sets the mobiliser off. Then we've got that for ignition, that for fuel, start that's brilliant so, it won't start unless you do both yeah. if you don't turn the key the switches don't work yeah if you turn the key you still need to put the switches and then you just turn that's, it off that's like that. fantastic yeah. front just after the roll cage that was built by us like i was saying without yeah. without james we would have still been struggling with that <laughs> um no so the metal was given to us by matt pipe bender brought by james we then painted it which made a bit of a mess but um yeah yeah, I cleared the garage up after that. <laughs> but it looks better. It's a roll cage. It does, it looks, looks fantastic. We're still going to tweak it a little bit. Uh, we're going to reinforce the floor where it is. It's only a show cage. It's not going to meet any like standards, like rally car standards. It's only a show cage, but a show cage is better than no cage. Yeah, definitely. Um, it certainly well, looks the part. Yeah. It, it really helps set it off as well. That's it, it, it does. Um, I'm going to add some extra brackets on it as well. Where the seat belts used to bolt on the door pillars, yeah. I'm now going to use the bolt hole because it's obviously a good structural part and I'm going to make some brackets up that still will clamp onto the roll cage. Yeah. So that will fix it to the body shell a bit more, give it a bit more strength. Like, so I'm going to go over all the floor mountings of it and strengthen them up as well. Got a bit of slightly different stereo system in it now as well at the back. I've just noticed that. It looks, um... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, we only got a small sub box unfortunately. Um, that was made for us by Ryan Bass Van, whose tag is on the doors. He's a great lad, and he wanted to get involved with it and help out as well. Well, again, it definitely looks absolutely amazing. It's, yeah, it is. It is, and it's the story of it and how it's come about and who's built it, you know? 
with the students. Yeah. It's all just brilliant. I mean, I've been toying with the idea that maybe trying to do a Christmas Day parcel run for Children's Hospital or something. Right, well, okay. With a load of modified cars. Try and help the kids out, obviously, make their Christmas a bit better with the kids that are in hospital. And also try and help the modified car scene get a little bit better name than what it sometimes does. Yeah, yeah, so, that's fair enough. I've got to speak to some hospitals about it, but if I can get convoy modified cars with some Christmas presents for kids in the hospital, that ain't going to do the modified car scene any harm, is it? No, no, definitely not. You know, so that's an idea that I've had and I'm, I'm looking at running into at the moment. And I'm sure a lot of my mates with modified cars will be up for it. Yeah. again, all strapped in. Oh. <laughs> I love this, this is fantastic. Yeah. Right then. Good for a giggle. Obviously, I've still got a little bit of a gremlin to sort out with the engine. Yeah. Um, might have to just double check all the earths and the wiring. It just it doesn't rev past 5,000 RPM. Yeah. So, a little it's bit annoying. It's not quite the right breath. So. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying at the moment. It's throwing up a fault code of a knock sensor, but it's I've replaced them and it's not that. So, we'll get there. We'll get yeah, there. Definitely. So you don't quite rev out. sort this little gremlin out at the moment because it's, it's spoiling it you yeah. know Something like that. It is just a glitch. It's a gremlin, but 
case. Yeah, so it'll just be something little. Probably. Yeah, it's not something we won't be able to sort out, but it's just how long it'll take to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, of I, I can um, obviously I've eliminated the knock sensors now, but I do get a fault code of the knock sensor. But if I've got a ground earthing problem somewhere, then it could be throwing them, them yeah. codes up. Knock sensor was only fifty quid, so it was worth it. You know, yeah. Burton's do an upgraded knock sensor, which I think is less sensitive. But that's like two hundred eighty quid. Ooh, yeah. I mean, if Burton Power Products want to donate one, thanks. Yeah, yeah. But you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, it is what it is. It's uh, it's still progressing. It's still evolving. It's still coming along. It's still great. Yeah. You know, like I say, the kids they love it. I love it. You guys love it. Yeah, we love it. As you well, know, definitely. a lot of people. I was out in it a couple of weekends ago. Had four random cars pull up beside me in traffic and give it yeah. back to it. So, whether it was to do with just the look of the car or the fact I've got autism awareness on the boot, I don't know, but I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm not gonna, not gonna say no. Um, I'd say if anyone, if I'm at a car meet any time, and I get a guy and he's like kids looking at it, I'll always let the kids sit in the car for photos yeah. and that because that's what it's about. It's, it's all about encouragement, positivity. So, if, you know, any kids want to sit in it. I let them get photos, sort of thing. It's like when I was a kid, this is the sort of thing that had my jaw on the floor. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so I just want to be able to help all the youth and that. Brilliant. And they are. Okay, so um, if you enjoyed that, like and subscribe, and uh, also we'll continue to follow um, Aidan uh, Project D over at uh, Radio Sport Engineering Boys. Academy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you for that. That was really good. See fun. you guys soon. See you guys soon. And uh, thank you as well. No Much worries, appreciated. Mate. Always good fun. No worries. Come on. Uh, yeah, so see you soon then. So uh, bye bye.